Howdy, good day. Hope you're doing fine. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm at LFD's house right now, loading up the kayak. Today's video is sponsored by Otterbox. Yes, you know the people that make the phone covers that everybody has? They also make coolers, and they sent me some, and they wanted me to utilize them. And since it is the season for the white bass and the crappie to get all clustered up out in the middle of the lake, it makes it super easy to catch them. And I do love to eat them, so I thought I'd put that old cooler to use. And I'll show you guys the cooler and what it's all about here in a little bit. But first, we gotta load some kayaks. We gotta get out to the lake, get out there in the yak. It's a beautiful, calm day. Use the electronics, find the wad, catch them up, put them in the otter box, bring them back. You guys know what happens. As luck would have it, there actually is a boat ramp open. So I could have taken the bass boat down here. Regardless, it's an absolutely gorgeous day to be out in the kayak, so. Just looking forward to getting, to getting a little exercise. Got the otter box loaded up. That's where we're gonna be keeping our fish in today. So we don't have to hang them off the side of the kayak. We're just gonna pedal on out there. Look at the smoothness. Don't get many days like these guys. These are the days you gotta get out there. It's like 60, almost 70 degrees outside. It's really nice. Oh yeah. This is when I like to get out there deep. So the tactic we're uh, basically gonna deploy today is spooning, you know, jigging spoons and things like that. There's a school of them right there, folks. Ooh, and we got one. We don't want him, but we found a school. Just coming through real quick, they're already gone. I think we found a magic depth though. There's another one, 31. Feet. Oh my gosh, you can see the school. Look how many are coming up with it. This is gonna be a keeper, here we go. That is what we are looking for, 30 foot. That is the juice. Now we are going to put it in the otter box. This is what is so awesome about this cooler, guys. It opens super wide. And it's leak proof, so I can put all these fish that have spines in there, it's not gonna not gonna mess up anything. So just put them amongst my snacks for now. Absolutely perfect for the kayak situation. And here's another school. They're just dead on the bottom. Dead on the bottom right here. Another thing I'm not doing is going with huge upstrokes. Because it just looks unnatural. You want it to look like shad that are sort of cold. Not super Aggressive. Oh, just had a bite. There he is. Got him. Oh, that feels like a better fish. This might be a largemouth. Oh, it's a crappie. Crappie. I just had him hooked in the side. Was all. This is what I love about fall. You get you get all species grouped together. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's like two millimeters under. Ah. Crappie are the tastiest of them all too. The key to this fall offshore fishing is, is all about points. Shad moving through on, on main lake points and maybe even secondary, like if you go up into the creeks and stuff, ooh, these are a little bit more off the bottom. Start your way, you know, kind of shallow, 10, 15 foot. Start looking at your electronics, pedal or drive on out, whatever you're in, I just had another bite. And then when you find the shad balls, you just want to start looking for some activity. And usually in the fall, the fish will be closer to the bottom, but they'll they'll come up and they'll grab shad pretty far up there, just wherever they are. There he is, got it. Oh, he's a keeper though. He's a keeper. Yes, they are liking it finesse style. Without electronics, there's just no way. There's just no way to do this. You're literally watching it constantly. See those little nuances on the depth changes? And then once you get on top of them, it's just the boink, right in the head. Ooh, they're under me. Let him go. Oh, we got the white bass right on that break, baby. Oh yeah. 
kind of chasing it up. They're cold. Good start, good start. Couple of fish in the cooler. Take you guys to another point. Long, long extended point that I think is gonna be juicy. I saw some seagulls out there earlier. It's gonna be a pretty good little pedal. So while I'm pedaling, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the cooler I got in the back of here. This is the Trooper. So the big advantage on this uh, Trooper LT30, you know, it is a backpack cooler, so it's super portable. It's extremely durable. I mean, you can treat it just like a hard cooler. It's leak proof. The greatest feature about it is the access. I mean, you open the top and it's a huge opening and it's easy. You can get in there with one hand. You don't have to like sit there, like clutch the cooler with your knees and unzip it. So it's got that huge sealed opening, very convenient. All I gotta do is put some fish in it, throw it on my back, you know, and take it back home. And then go clean my fish. Another thing that's really nice for me is I didn't carry my camera bag out here because I didn't need to. This has got side pockets on it. It's not completely water sealed, like you can't just drag it underwater. But if I dropped it out of the kayak, it wouldn't be a big deal. My gear would be fine. There's no need to carry all of my, my camera bags and everything that I usually have to carry when I'm out here or a dry bag. I usually carry a dry bag in the kayak and put my stuff. I don't want to get wet in there. I don't think I have to speak to the quality of OtterBox to y'all very much. They make really high quality stuff. They've already proven themselves in the market with their phone cases, but now they're making dry bags, these coolers and all sorts of other stuff. They put a lot of research and development into their products and I've never seen a cooler like that, that opens like that. I thought that was ingenious. They wanted me to let y'all know that for a limited time, they're offering some extras when you purchase your coolers from otterbox.com. With that trooper like I got in the back of the kayak, you're gonna get a Elevation 64 growler. It's a stainless growler to keep your drinks cool or hot. And if y'all wanna check out the Venture coolers, if you get one of the 25 sizes, you actually get a, a free dry box from OtterBox. You can check those out at OtterBox.com. I actually have one back at the house. I'll show y'all and I'm gonna put the fish in, let them chill overnight before I clean them. I got a link at the top of the description. You guys can check them out, but you won't be disappointed with the quality. All their stuff is good. They're a great company. I have located these fish again, y'all. I've actually located a, some better wads of them and we're about to dangle them up and put them in this trooper back here. Found you. Oh, it's getting hit. It's getting hit every time. This is the juice. There he is. Got him. Oh, that's a puller. That is a puller there. That is a big in there. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Yes. Oh, come here, baby. Oh, we're about to start snatching. Oh, my. We're going to start snatching. These are a little shallower too, they're feeding. Oh, we are going to get snatched. There's a little bit of wind here, but super manageable. It's all good, I just blew off of the spot, just a hair, and they were just stacked. There he is, woo, baby. Another juicy one. And there's the pile again. 15 will feed a few people, y'all, especially when they're that size. My mama loves fried fish. So does the rest of my family. Ooh, come on, come on back now, got you. Ooh, got you, baby. I like it when it's like this, y'all. It's like guarantee when you get down there, it's happening. Ooh, there we go. It's actually sitting still when you grabbed it. Just gotta unhook him and get back down there ASAP. Hooked up, definitely a dandy. Oh my goodness, that's how you want to see it right there. Absolutely inhaled. I'm jigging, look, jigging my bait. You can see it right in front of their face right now. That should be a fish, come on. These ledges are key. They're, they're more stacked on the ledges than they are the point. Like there's a long point that goes out and there's a lot of fish on it, but I can't pinpoint where they want to be on that point. They're just cruising around so much. This steep bank leading up to the point, you go in 27 feet of water, it drops off into, into 31 and bam, those fish are there. They're not in huge numbers, but you know, in a 200 yard stretch, there's fish down that ledge the, the entire way. It's just a couple grouped together at a time. It seems like they want the vertical spoon more. 
than the blade bait. I've had one fish on the blade bait. There he is. Woo! That's exactly how it goes. Just get that one bite every once in a while. Most of them are hitting it while it's sitting still. Ooh, baby, come on now. And normally when I'm fishing these things, I'm looking for hundreds, hundreds piled up together. And it's just fast, fast action. Oh, got another one. Ooh, yes. Another keeper. Here we go. Got the wind against me. Fish here against me. Ain't stopping me. Let's see if I can bat the cycle here. Got him. And once you're on the, uh, on the juice, you're gonna get them. It's like they're they're eating there. It's just not many of them. One more down there too. He's like, where are all my buddies? About to join your buddies, sir. Just a light little twitchy. Light little twitchy. Oh, got him. Oh shoot. Our electronics just went out. You're not a keeper. LFD warned me. This might happen. Could be a battery issue. Luckily, I brought an extra. You're just not going to catch these fish without electronics. Don't do this to me. I think I got two dead batteries. If this thing won't stay on, we are pretty much SOL here, folks. It's probably not going to last very long. Got to make it count. Oh, we're hooked up again. Oh, it's a little one. Oh, I'm drifting away. No. Oh, there we go. Come on, baby. Yes, keeper. Bam, we are doing it. Okay, just need like one or two more. Yes, I'm hooked. Got the little juice ledge here. Come on, baby. I feel like a solid one. Solid, yeah. There's a solid keeper. Oh no, the electronics cut out. No. Let's see if I can get one more without the electronics. That's all we got. She's out. I've got one more. I have another one on. Yes. No electronics. Got him. It's a good one. Oh, game ender, baby. That's gonna be food for the whole fam. Game ender right there. That's a nice stringer fish. Oh, man. This is a, a perfect little cooler for the kayak. You can just take it out of here. Take it up to the house. Success. We even got one without the electronics. We did pretty good, y'all. Did real good. back to the tree house and I've got the big cooler set out. Now this is the Venture 45. It's meant to be on adventures. I think that's why they put Venture in it. I could quarter up a deer, put it in there, and put a whole bunch of limits of crappie in there for sure, but this can hold ice for up to 14 days. Of course it's made in the US. Fully customizable designs. So you can put your cutting board on there. You got your little serving tray. Any kind of things you want to put on there. It comes with these little latches on the side and there's a lot of accessories. But its purpose for tonight is to keep my fish nice and chilled so I can slice them up tomorrow and they're gonna be delicious when it comes time to cook them. I like to do this. I've done a lot of these catch and cooks and it seems that when you cook them right after you catch them, especially in the summertime, it's just kind of gamey. The fish, uh, the meat doesn't come out quite right. So definitely want to chill them if you have the time to come out better. A brand new glorious outdoor day. Start the morning off with some coffee, some flannel, and cleaning fish. I even started myself a little fire over there, burning some of these extra limbs in the yard. I know y'all have probably seen me clean some fish, but I'm gonna do a few on camera for you, and just in case you've never done white bass, I'll show you how to clean them up. These fish are gonna be nice and chilled, easy to clean, much easier than if you just take them right off the water. And then we're gonna vacuum seal them up for a family fish fry. Take that out of the way. You are just how I left you, little sirs and ma'ams. You don't want them to be all twisted up because that makes them harder to clean, so they're nice and straight, ready for a fillet knife. 
never cleaned my bass before. They are pretty spiny. Like a crappie has spines, but these have a lot of pokies. And their gill plates are sharp, and they will cut you up too. I've already got cuts on my hands. I'm used to cleaning these, so whatever. Take your fillet knife, y'all. Make sure it is sharp. A dull knife is useless. Kind of go in at an angle so you get at the top of the back where a lot of that good meat is, thicker meat, and then you just want to take your blade and go down the spine. Now if you have an electrical fillet knife, you can pretty much just go all the way through the fish and cut through the rib cage and everything, but with these type of fillet knives, it's a little harder to go through the rib cage, plus it damages your knife a lot quicker. So I like to go on that top part of the spine, and then once you get through the rib cage, you poke all the way through, keep that blade pointed slightly down at the spine, and then you get almost all the way to the end there, and then you can cut around the rib cage. It is so much easier to clean these fish when they're chilled. I mean, it just goes right through them. The meat's firm. Flip your fish over like that. All the meat is hanging on the, the skin side right here. Go down on that skin and then just push through. And literally that is like butter right there. That is like butter. Okay, there we go. Second filet. Then what I do with these carcasses is I just put them right back in the cooler with all the ice. So if you're not in an area where you can just go dump them immediately, you know, I'm pretty close to the to the woods and the lake where I could go put them in the water or put them in trash, but keep them in here, eight, 10, 14 days, however, before you go dump them. Okay, that is how you break in a cooler. <laughs> this thing is bloody and nasty, and I think that's the way it should be, you know? You're supposed to beat these things up. I'm gonna vacuum seal these to keep them fresh, and they're gonna be ready for a family fish fry coming up soon. And I gotta thank OtterBox one more time for sponsoring today's video and sending me some awesome coolers. Steph was actually quite disappointed when that cooler came in because she was gonna get me that for Christmas because I was talking about it. And now she doesn't know what to get me and uh, I don't really know what to get her. Let me know what I should get her in the comments. As always, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in, being here, subscribing, hitting the ding-dongs, leaving your positive comments, hitting the like button. Y'all fishing freaks are some of the best daggum people on the internet. I love you, I appreciate you. Until the next time I see you, God bless you. Have a great day in the outdoors, and I'll see you on the next one.